Well, for the last couple of weeks, India has been in the midst of what we've been calling a hate wave, where religious processions such as the one in Jahangir Puri in Delhi have turned into communal clashes, where hate speeches have been made with impunity by those who are out on bail for the same offence, but who have clearly no fear of the law, where bulldozers are being used to raise the homes of those alleged to have thrown stones at Ram Navmi processions, all in violation of any due process. What is going on and do we need special laws to deal with the problems of hate speech and everything that we're seeing around us? Justice Madan Lokur uh, was on India's Supreme Court. He's retired now. He joins us uh, on NDTV today. Uh, Justice Lokur, if I could just ask you firstly your thoughts on, on, on you know, what we're talking about and, and the state of the country today. It seems that almost every day now there is some communal tension or the other uh, that is making front page news. Yes, it is uh, very alarming. There's no doubt about it. Uh, we can't have, uh, you know, communal violence or, uh, you know, hate speech going on on a daily basis. Uh, this has to stop. And th there's no doubt about it. How would you say that the courts have then held up, uh, you know, in, as, as a sort of a, uh, as one of a, the pillars of our democracy? Uh, ha have the courts also failed to do their duty? I think so, you know, in the sense that, uh, you see, many of these issues need to be resolved quickly. You know, uh, you can't wait for a couple of months to take a decision on this. It has to be done quickly. And the more you delay judgment, you know, during the uh, period uh, that the case is pending, people will indulge in hate speech, they will indulge in violence and so on. And if somebody wants to uh, stop them, they will say, oh, you know, the matter is subjudice. So the decision has to be taken by the courts quickly and, you know, finally, in the sense that, uh, you know, not that adjourn it, uh, you know, and have it again after about a week or 10 days and so on. It, it can't go on like this. I, I just wanted to though break up, uh, you know, the various issues that we're dealing with at the moment, sir. And one of them is the issue of hate speech. Now, you have Yati Narsinghanand who was arrested uh, you know, by in Uttarakhand for a hate speech that was, you know, made and then he subsequently got bail with the condition that he would not do it again. He did it again in Delhi and, uh, you know, he's not been arrested again. There is clearly no fear of the law. There is clearly a, a mockery that he's making of our courts as well, of our judiciary. Yes, certainly, certainly. And somebody has to be held accountable for this. And in a case like this, I think uh, the police or the prosecution will have to be held accountable. You can't violate orders of the court and get away with it, right? Uh, somebody has to be held accountable. I have, I have no doubt about that. And there's no provision here for the court itself to step in and say, hello, we gave you bail. There were certain conditions. You're violating them. If the police aren't acting, can't the courts do it? The courts should be able to do it, you know, but for some reason, they're not doing it. You know, I mean, there, there's so many things which are happening, you know, instances are brought to the court and uh, the court just adjourns it and says all right we'll take it up after some time right there's no finality to the decision so when that happens in a case that is brought before the court by somebody by the prosecution or by an individual or a group and a decision is not taken it's you know it's it's, it's very unlikely that the court will act on its own and say all right you know we are going to go ahead and uh, look into this case but, uh, you know, I, I have seen that in the past you've batted very strongly for having separate laws to deal with hate speech. Now, technically, it's kind of covered uh, in the law, isn't it? I mean, if, if, the, if the prosecution wants, if the police wants, they can go after people for hate speech. They just perhaps don't do it as much as they should. Uh, so what kind of laws would you actually like to see? And do you think it would actually help? Uh, you see, the Supreme Court has taken a decision in 2014 in uh, Pravasi Bhalai Sangathan. And in that decision, they have said that the law as it exists is sufficient to deal with hate speech. Right? Uh, the Karnataka High Court has subsequently taken a view that since uh, hate speech has not been defined, we can't prosecute a person for hate speech. That is contrary to the decision of the Supreme Court. Now, if you look at uh, the various provisions under the Indian Penal Code, uh, I think there are enough uh, provisions to deal with hate speech. You know, one has to keep an open mind and see that, uh, you know, the law is interpreted correctly. And if the Supreme Court says that the, the, the law is sufficient, 
I don't see why prosecutions cannot take place. So why do you think they're not taking place then? Is it <laughs> clearly a lack of political will to do it? Uh, yeah, well, I suppose that's a million dollar question. Why are they not taking place? Yeah, I suppose so, yes. Can I ask you then about the other aspect, which is, you know, the bulldozers that are now sort of under full swing in Madhya Pradesh, in Khargaon, uh, after yeah. the Ram Navmi violence that we saw that day, the, the government there going full steam ahead and saying, look, we're acting against those who allegedly, they're not even saying allegedly, well, they're saying these are the people who pelted stones of this procession, so we're tearing their houses down. Isn't this a complete violation of any due process, sir? Absolutely. Absolutely. There, there is no doubt about it. I mean, you can't go to somebody's house, you know, and uh, demolish it. It's, it's just completely out of the question. You know, take, take something, uh, you know, like a civil offense, all right? If uh, somebody owes money to somebody else and does not pay the uh, amount, even then, the residential premises cannot be taken away. So I don't see how, under what provision of law, can they demolish uh, somebody's house for an offence that has not even been proved? You know, it's just an accusation. And if the authorities get away with it, uh, you know, we are, we are headed for deep trouble. But then I ask you again, why, why aren't the courts speaking up? I, I mean, courts take, I, I, I don't like this word suomoto, but it, it, that's what it's called, right? They, they take up issues on their own. They issue notices when they want to. What, what is preventing India's Supreme Court that everyone else looks up to, sir, from, from taking cognizance of this and saying this is a blatant violation of the law, stopping it? Yeah, I think they should. You know, I mean, the courts have to be proactive. You know, that, that's one thing. Okay. And I think in the recent past, the courts have not been proactive. They've not even been reactive in the sense that people have come to the courts, you know, habeas corpus petitions, for example, electoral bonds and so on, and the courts have not taken any action. So if the courts are not reactive, there's no chance of the courts being proactive. And if the courts are not proactive, uh, you know, the executive will get away with things like, uh, you know, bulldozing houses and so on. But the courts and have also said that if you say it with a smile, it's not hate speech. Where does that yeah. come from? Yeah, uh, well, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's very strange. It's very, very strange. Yeah. Well, Justice Lokur, just last thoughts from you then. I mean, you're, you're saying that you're worried about, you know, what, what the country is going through at the moment as a citizen, as someone who served the highest court. Uh, what would you like to see urgently, especially from the government? Would you like to hear the Prime Minister break his silence on this? What would you like to hear? And see? Well, I would like uh, the government to say that, you know, whatever is happening, right, has to be investigated and investigated very quickly, number one. Number two, it has to stop, right? It, the feeling is, the feeling is that these people who are doing these kind of things, the government is, in a sense, complicit. Uh, the demolition of uh, houses in uh, Madhya Pradesh has been done by the government, right? So obviously, the government is somehow or the other involved, whether it's the state government or whether it's the central government, uh, that's besides the point. I think the government has to say that, listen, stop it. Enough is enough. And if the government doesn't do it, I think the courts should step in, be proactive and say, Tell us what's going on. You know, you can't violate the rule of law with impunity and get away with it. You know, this, this is just not acceptable at all. I hope somewhere someone uh, in, in that uh, in the hallowed halls of the judiciary is listening to you, Justice Lokur. Thank you very much, sir, for Thank joining you. us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.